Hello and welcome to this session in which we will keep discussing the elements of the contract. To have a valid, enforceable legal contract, you have to have three elements, and those are an offer and acceptance, an offer by the offerer, and an acceptance by the offeree. And we spoke in depth about how should the offer be made and how should the acceptance be made as well. Simply put, we have two parties and they have a mutual assent. They have to have some sort of an exchange of value. One person given value, the other person receiving value. The value does not have to be the same. In this session, we're going to be working on no defense for the contract. Simply put, for a valid contract to exist, there should not be a reason for the court not to enforce this contract. Because we are looking at what type of contract? Enforceable contract. Because if the contract is not enforceable, there's a defense. Simply put, one party don't have to perform for one reason or another. Well, the contract can be void or voidable. And we discussed the term void and voidable in the prior session. In the prior session, we looked at certain events that could happen that makes the contract either void or voidable, such as fraud, mistake or mistakes by one party or both parties, duress, undue influence. In this session, we would look at additional factors that could make the contract either void or voidable. Let's go ahead and get started. The first scenario you are going to discuss is illegal. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. If a contract involves an illegal action or an illegal payment, well, it's usually considered void. Void means the contract don't exist anymore. This means the law will not enforce it. For example, an agreement to commit a crime is a contract. Well, there is, <laughs> you paid someone to commit a crime. However, since the crime itself is illegal, that's it, the contract is void or a deal involving illegal goods falls under this category. Simply illegal goods could be illegal drugs. Imagine Sarah agrees to pay David $5,000 to hack into a competitor's computer system to steal business information. Well, Sarah's getting something in return. She's giving the hacker $5,000. They're both getting something in return. There's an offer and there's acceptance. However, the act itself is illegal. Therefore, the contract is not enforceable. And this contract would be void because hacking into a system is illegal. So that's the purpose of the contract. Therefore, the act itself is a crime. So add the illegality will make a contract void. Void means that's it. It doesn't exist as far as the court is concerned. Licensed. In contract law, the enforceability of a contract can be affected by whether or not a party has a required license. Who has who needs a license? A doctor, a lawyer, a barber shop, a vendor on the street. Okay. Now here what we need to know is the key factor here is the purpose of the license. There are two purposes why licenses are granted. When a license is required for public protection, simply put, before they give you a license, the state the government, they want to make sure you can perform your job. And what, what are we talking about here? Think about doctors, CPAs, most likely you're going to be a future CPAs, attorneys, real estate agent. Well, why do we grant those licenses and we make them take an exam and pay a fee? Is to protect the public. Now, when the license is required for public, such as in these, in these, in this profession, as well as, for example, electrician, not having a license makes the contract void. That's it. If you, if, if the other party don't have a license and that license is required to protect the public. So if you go, if you went to a doctor and they perform a surgery or they treated you, but under the assumption that they were, it's a doctor. Well, a doctor means they have a license from the state. 
Well, if you find out later that they were not really a doctor, it doesn't matter. Even if they treated you correctly, well, it does not matter. The contract can be void. This means that even if the unlicensed professional performed the service, they cannot legally demand payment. However, if a license is required merely for the purpose of generating revenue for the governing bodies, for example, a vendor on the street will need a license, a barber shop will need a license. Well, the lack of such a license does not typically render the contract unenforceable. You still have to pay them whatever you purchase from that vendor, from that barber shop, but it's it's not voidable. It's just simply they don't have a license. It's not your problem. It's their problem with the county, with the state, with the government body. Example, let's say a contract is made with Alex, who claims to be a licensed electrician. Well, then they're going to rewire a home for you. Later, it discovered that Alex does not have an electrician's license, which is required for public safety. In this case, the contract could be void, and Alex could not legally claim payment for the work done. Whether you want to pay them or not, that's a different story, but the contract itself is void. Let's talk about a minor. Minor is someone under the age of 18. They can cancel a contract anytime before adulthood or shortly after. A minor is a minor. Let's think of it as a child. Now, in some state, a minor is 18. In some state, the minor is 21. Usually on the exam, they'll tell you it's a minor. Well, they must return any items from the contract upon cancellation. So if they purchase something and they want to return it, the seller will have to accept, but they have to return the item. The minor's age cannot be used by other parties to avoid their obligation. Simply put, you cannot basically use a minor to go into a contract. Once... An adult, so once you reach the age of majority, a person can be bound to a contract made as a minor, but not, but by not canceling it after turning 18. So after you turn 18 or shortly after, you have to make a decision whether I want to keep this contract or cancel it. You can still cancel it shortly after 18, but if you don't, it becomes binding. It means you're no longer a minor, you agree to it. So now, formally agreeing to it or continuing to use it to use its benefit. Let's take a look at an example. Emily, 17, signs up for a one-year gym membership. Okay, that's a contract. After eight months, Emily decided the membership isn't suitable for her anymore. She went to the gym and said, I would like to cancel my membership. And the gym would say, well, you can, but we're still going to have to charge you because you sign up for a yearly membership. Emily would say, oh, great, but I'm a minor. You, don't, you can't hold me to that. So being a minor, she has the right to dis disinfirm the contract and stop her membership. So she can because she's a minor. Since she's still under 18, she can do this, cancel, without facing any legal consequences. They cannot collect the remaining four months from her, even though she used the gym for several months. Now, Emily cannot, however, ask for a refund because she already used the gym. Let's assume Emily purchased a treadmill, just for the sake to, to change the scenario. Well, guess what? She can cancel the contract, but she has to return the treadmill. And it doesn't matter in which condition the treadmill in, they will have to take the treadmill without, without, without her incurring any additional cost. Intoxication, being drunk. A contract may, be, may not be enforceable if one party was so intoxicated when they agreed to it so that they could not understand what they are agreeing to and the other party knew about the intoxication, or the assumption is you knew about the intoxication. This rule is designed to protect people from being unfairly bound to an agreement they could not comprehend due to intoxication. So, another way to get out of a contract, say, I was drunk when that happened. Example, Jenny, significantly was intoxicated, agrees to sell her car to her neighbor Mark for a very low price. Mark was aware of her intoxication and quickly finalizes the deal. Later, when she sobered up, she realized what happened and decided, you know what, I would like to cancel this deal. In this situation, the contract could be considered void because Jenny was too intoxicated to understand the agreement and Mark was aware of her condition. Now, she can still sell it if she wants to, but at least she has this option. Mentally incompetent. If a person has been officially recognized by a court as mentally incompetent. It means they don't understand legally what they're doing. Any contract they make after that decision is automatically invalid.
This rule protects individuals who lack capacity to fully understand the contract they are entering into. So you want to make sure you, we're dealing with someone, they are mentally competent. They're not declared by the court mentally incompetent because if they are, they can sign anything, they can get out of it with no problems. Also, statutes of limitations. The statutes of limitation is like a countdown for take legal action on a contract. So if someone wants to sue a for a breach, they have a set amount of time to do so, usually four to six years from when the breach has happened. You can't wait forever. If this time passes without a lawsuit being filed, the contract is not nullified, but the court says, I can no longer do it. I can I cannot help you. It's not enforceable for me anymore. So the ability to use the court system to enforce it or seek damages is lost. So you want to make sure you're aware of that. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. A contract, a contract entered into by a person who has been declared mentally incompetent is what? Is it voidable, vo void, enforceable if it's fair and reasonable? Is it enforceable if it's fair and reasonable? No, regardless. Whether it's fair whether it's fair and unreasonable, it does not matter. It's not enforceable. It might be fair. It might be reasonable. It might be to the advantage uh, of the person that's being mentally incompetent. But if they, they, they want, it's void. Simply put, it's void. Well, the answer is void. Enforceable, if the other party was unaware of the competency, it doesn't matter whether you are unaware or not. Once the person like, look, <laughs> I'm not going to perform. I'm mentally incompetent. Then it's done. Is it voidable at the discretion of the competent party? Not at all. Not at all. The competent party is, yes, of course, the, the competent party, yes, I, I want the contract, but they don't have that choice. The answer is the contract is void. Void means as far as the, co the court is concerned, it does not exist. You cannot enforce it. The, the contract is void. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you understand this concept better. Whether you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student, invest in yourself, invest in your career. Good luck. Study hard. Farhat Lectures is here to help you and stay safe.